NextGen Energy Limited is a British Columbia based corporation that focuses on Canadian uranium development. I'm here at the 2018 Sprout Natural Resources Conference and I'm joined by Travis McPherson. Travis, great to have you here today. Thanks very much for having me. Well, first and foremost, for viewers in the audience who are not familiar with your company, could you give us an overview? Sure. So we're based in Saskatchewan, Canada, the home of the Athabasca Basin, which is basically where you find the highest grade, highest tonnage uranium deposits. We've discovered the Aero deposit, uh, which we discovered back in February of 2014. And since then, we basically delineated the largest uh, high grade uranium deposit that's to be developed in the world. Um, and we've put out a maiden preliminary economic assessment, which is confirmed independently by a third party uh, that this will be the largest, lowest cost uranium mine in the world. And for viewers in the audience who want to know about your projects, can you give us an overview of what you have going on right now? Sure. So our flagship asset is uh, the Aero Deposit, which is located in the southwestern part of the Athabasca Basin. Um, that's effectively a new district that's opening up. It has, with us and surrounding areas, about 500 million pounds of currently known resources and that's basically only really been discovered since 2012. Um, we obviously made our discovery in uh, 2014, early 2014 and uh, we're, we're basically in the point where we're transitioning Aero from pure exploration into the development phase now. Um, you know despite the fact that we have not closed off the deposit in any direction it's still wide open but because we have over 300 million pounds of contained resources inferred and indicated um, you know, that's more than enough to get going and, and really start building the mine as we continue exploring and developing the project. Well, I think there's been a lot of focus on your winter drilling program, but I understand the summer drilling program has commenced. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, kind of, you know, along the same lines as winter, really, uh, a little bit expanded uh, program. And really, it's a two-pronged attack. You have one prong, which is more the development kind of work. So that includes sh drilling shaft pilot holes, foot wall characterization holes. Really, all of that is geared towards surface and underground infrastructure at Aero. Um, and then the other half of it is on kind of what we're calling global extent exploration. And really, as weird as it might sound, because we have the world's best, largest deposit, uh, the reality is we don't actually know the full extent of it uh, by any means. Um, the deposit itself is still wide open, but even you know when you're talking about a 500 meter radius around arrow, we haven't really fully tested could there potentially be another arrow sitting there or you know what else is out there and so that part of this summer program is really to it's not to add incremental pounds because we have enough to get going um, and it's not the best use of capital today but uh, it really is geared towards understanding as we go into development do we know where the center of gravity of this deposit truly is or not so we should have a really good feel for that by the end of the summer program. And you just mentioned capital, which is key for any company, but for people who are interested in investing in your company, can you give us an overview of your management team as well as your financials right now? Yeah, sure. So we're run by uh, all, uh, you know, uranium people, effectively. We've, uh, the company is founded by Lee Couriers, the CEO and director, uh, who's spent his whole career in uranium. Uh, he's basically looked at every single uranium project around the world from a technical, financial, and sovereign risk perspective. Um, you know, across the board, it's all basically uranium people. And then uh, across the, and, and basically we have two offices really. We have a Vancouver office, which is more a satellite office, uh, basically a conduit to the capital markets. And then we have our Saskatoon office in Saskatchewan, and we really are a Sas Saskatchewan company. And that's where the bulk of the staff is. And there lies all of our technical staff and uh, and a lot of our accounting and all that. So we have you know a lot of uh, seasoned geologists, engineers, permitting people that are all specifically trained in uranium in Canada. So we definitely have the team to to bring it all the way through the development team, obviously as well as the exploration team, which has proven to be uh, you know one of the best in in uranium's history uh, from a time cost of developing these resources. Um, and uh, in terms of capital, we have, you know, our biggest shareholder is CEF Holdings, which is a 50-50 joint venture between Li ka Shing, which is Asia's richest individual, and CIBC Bank, which is one of the chartered banks in Canada. So really, really deep pockets. And more important than that, um, you know, they've obviously given us uh, 170 million U.S. in capital to date. We have 150 million left uh, in the bank today. today. Uh, but more than anything, what we got... W in their investment is true alignment with 
um, you know, one of the greatest investors of in the world. Um, and uh, he, their group actually gave us their rights to their votes. So what that means is effectively from a M&A perspective, we're kind of protected with about 19% of the shares contractually locked up to vote the way that the board recommends to their shareholders. And I think that really speaks to the, uh, you know, the support and trust really that uh, CEF has in how we've developed this asset to date uh, and how we've stewarded it. Well, now that I have a better understanding of NextGen Energy's uh, operations, I do want to conclude this interview by asking you about the outlook for uranium. Now, recently we know that uh, uranium has been receiving plenty of headlines, but as we head into the second half of this year, as well as next year, what do you expect to see overall? Yeah, I think in our history, we've never been this constructive on the uranium space as NextGen's history. Um, you know, the reality is we've been in about a seven and a half year bear market and one of the worst, you know, on an inflation adjusted basis, uranium's at the lowest level it's been in history. Um, and it's been a very prolonged period of low prices. But what that does, you know, and Rick Rule is a famous person for saying that cure for low prices is low prices. And the reality is that's now come true. We've had severe supply cuts, um, whether it's old mines just exhausting or whether it's uh, mines that could keep producing but economically it doesn't make sense right now too, or if it's just rationalization to tighten up the market, you've seen all that occur. And we're kind of in that window in time where everything that needs to happen to make the price go up has already happened, but the price just hasn't quite gone up yet. But that means we're in the last little bits of, of it going. Um, fortunately for us at NextGen, we don't, we don't rely on the uranium spot price going up. Uh, we have the capital, we have the project, we have the team. But, you know, I think nobody at the company would deny uh, having a nice tailwind as opposed to a headwind in the backdrop of the commodity would be very nice. And as next gen's history, we've never seen that. So I think we're right there. Okay, Travis. Well, thank you so much for joining me at the Sprott Natural Resources uh, Conference and thanks for your insights. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.